Are we hungry? Are we hungry? No? Sure? Thank you, because I am taking, going to talk on two consecutive topics. And uh, these two topics are very important. The first one is very important, very, very important. So I need you all to pay attention to the first topic. Second topic is relatively less important, but still it is must. So this is my profile. I have been trained in diabetic foot management from Amruta Institute, Kochi. I'm practicing as a diabetologist and a diabetic foot care expert from Aurangabad. First of all, we will go, how does a diabetic foot wound really occur? Anybody has got any idea how does it occur? Any comments on this? Sorry? Unknowingly, why? Because of neuropathy. Okay, anything else? Minor traumas are there, fine, fair enough. Lack of knowledge, okay. Callus formation. Anything else? Why the callus is there? Pressure pointation, that's the key. Thank you. So, we'll continue. The mechanism of injury in a diabetic foot, it's because of pressure. Pressure is equal to force divided by the surface area. Force would be a perpendicular force of your body and a tangent force when you walk, if the uh, shoes is ill-fitted or it is uh, loosely fitted, then there is a shear force, uh, the shoe force and the walking force, they uh, have a brushing effect and then the injuries is occurs. If there is a small surface area, that area has got the highest pressure point, just like the first metatarsal head. In biomechanical aspect of ulcer formation, the breakdown skin, or uh, once we walk, there is around 500 to 700 kilopascals pressure, which has been uh, there at the foot and your plantar surface. And this is the major cause of callosities formation, deformities, and uh, non-healing. This is what the example which I was talking about. Yeah, this is a callosity. And if we deroof the callosity, or if, we, if we slightly slice it off, there is beneath an ulcer. A callosity itself will increase the pressure by 30 times, three zero. You have to into it in 30, whatever the pressure is, into 30, that time amount of pressure has been exerted if there is a callosity there. So we have to manage the callosity first and foremost once you see it. If we say that the pleak plantar pressure is 600 kilopascals, then there is ischemia and anoxia. In non-diabetic patients, there is an instant recovery, where in diabetic patients, there is a delayed recovery, which leads to formation of inflammation, arrhythmia, warmth, leading to a blister formation, and then an ulcer. We have got a vascular phenomena also in which if a zero 600 kilopascal pressure has been exerted while walking, uh, the radial artery get occluded at 120 mm of mercury. That is only 15 kilopascals. Capillaries get agglutinated at 6 kilopascals. And we are exerting a pressure of 600 kilopascals while walking. It is 100 times more. That's why there is ischemia and uh, the recovery in a diabetic patient is, uh, has got a delayed recovery and the chances of infection gets more in diabetic patient. This is what a uh, diabetic foot, we have got a high arch here, first metatarsal head, we have got a plantar, he has a high arch, there's an intrinsic muscles uh, strengthening or weakness tightening, that is a pressure areas in this. Uh, do you think that uh, diabetic wounds or foot infections are from outside in? It is said that 85% of diabetic foot ulcers are within out. It's because of the pressure. 85% are because of pressure. 15% remaining your trauma or something happens from outside, then that is there. But 85% are from within out. Repeated moderate force of routine unprotected walking can damage the feet in diabetic patients. 
Diabetic foot ulcer is a mechanical problem and no amount of antibiotic or dressings will heal the ulcer unless and until the pressure is reduced. There is a graphical representation for or a PUDO scan, which we call as. The assessment of PUDO scan are, uh, comes in this way. There is a graphical uh, uh, presentation along of the graphs. There is a digital presentation or the markings are there. There is another type of a presentation where you can see your hot spots. Red spots are hot spots. These are the peak plantar pressures. These are the normal. This is normal. Here we got slightly increased pressures, whereas here a peak plantar pressures exerts. In a normal feet, everything is normal. In a flat feet, mid, first, uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, ray, in a high arch. This means if the uh, structural abnormality starts increasing in a foot, the pressure distribution goes on decreasing, uh, goes into a various uh, domains and it increases in pressure points. The prevention of excess pressure on a point that tends to ulcerate is referred to as offloading. Most important step in preventing progression in a diabetic patient is to reduce the number of loading cycle, that is reduce walking, and redistributing the pressure by offloading. Offloading it could be uh, with the help of a uh, uh, footwear or surgical offloading. These are the methods of offloading. Basically, bed rest, crunches, total contact cast, modified footwears, rocker insole, molded insoles, a lot of things are there. In foot orthosis, we have majorly two shoes modification. One is internal and one is external. These are number of numerous insoles. We have got a bike offloader, front offloader, we have got a middle arch, we have got a front offloader, a ring, got uh, two separators, metatarsal bar. These are different uh, upon the type of ulcer, upon type of uh, pressures where it is exerting. Depending upon that, the pressure, the insole has been used and pressure has been distributed. These are the off soles, that is the outer. This is a front offloader. This is a back offloader. This is a rocker bottom. This is a insole where we got the packets. Wherever the ulcer is there, we can remove that amount of packets from there and we can offload it. It is a simple process. This kind of a shoe uh, or a sandal is available in which you can place this uh, insole and uh, we can have a uh, offloading at this uh, typical ulcer area. This is a mid, uh, uh, mid foot offloader. These are the customized insole depending upon the uh, structure uh, which we generate, the report which we generate from the PUDO scan, then this uh, kind of insole has been modified and it has been fitted in the shoe. These are customized uh, insoles. These are farmer shoes, these are executive shoes. This is a cast where we get a negative, from which we get a negative cast like this. And this is a machine where we go and have a insole modification depending upon the cast. These are the uh, offloaders. This is a uh, MCR insole in which depending upon the type of ulcer, we can offload it. There are numerous kind of ulcers, middle, first, first and fifth. Depending upon the uh, type of ulcers, we can uh, modify the insoles as per need. This is an elastic uh, insole which has been fitted with uh, the elastic uh, bandages. If in case somebody says that the uh, I'm not able to use a footwear or a sandal in house, then this kind of uh, offloader is being given. This is a filler pad, which is used in a high arch. This is a filler pad with an anterior rocker, where we have got the anterior callosities or ulcer. Then this rocker has been used so that to offload the remaining portion. This is another uh, type where we can have a hill offloading. This is a tarsal curl. This is an elephant shape for a uh, hill ulcer in a flat foot patient, typically. Then if we say that uh, in a high risk patient or a high risk foot, there is a loss of protective sensation, intrinsic muscles go into paralysis, there is a fixed gross deformities with a severe scarring, usually in a high risk foot patient. What we do is we mold the insole as per 
the patient's feet itself. And then what the result comes is in this way. If we see, here are the flat fits with a peak plantar pressures here, here. And once we mold the insole, then the pressure has been evenly distributed throughout the feet. So this is what we have to do in a diabetic patient. In a normal walking gait, the first metatarsal stance on a diabetic patient has got a highest contact point, And this leads to major ulcer formation at the first metatarsal head. This is a rocker. If we see, there is a beautifully curved insole as per the feet. And if you see, there is a huge difference. So the pressure gets reduced and the chances of callosity formation or ulcer formation reduces by 60 to 70%. These are MCR insole uh, chapels, normal for normal feet. These are modified insoles, which we have discussed already. This is a molded shoe with an insole for this patient. There is an ankle braces for a charcoal foot abnormality or a short foot or uh, the bony uh, destruction is there and we have to offload it. Then the braces have been used. This is a high plant, uh, high patella brace. This is the patella braces. Again, the same. Let's go to the cases. Couple of cases. 60 years old male, diabetic, 20 years, mixed at 30 to 70, uh, 30 70. Sugars fairly controlled. Callosity is in six months. On examination, callosity was there and second metatarsal head, five by five centimeter in diameter, mild neuropathy. Uh, ABI is normal. What to do? Any guesses? How to manage this patient if it comes down to your OPD? Remove the callus. Till what extent? That's a surgeon's call. Okay, fair enough. What is what has been practiced at your end? No, no, no. I'm just saying what if in case this kind of a patient comes, what you, what surgeon or what your surgeon would be doing it? right from the core right from the core okay 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 yeah and recommending offloading of the foot for at least till the movement okay okay anything anybody has got a different opinion from the back sorry okay fair enough anything else four foot of the Four foot, metatarsal bar, same things. Anything else? What about the callus management? The callus management, how is it going to be? The same way the madam said? Moist only. Moist only. Moist dressing. Okay. Anything else? Leave it alone. Okay. I already told you, if the uh, callosity is there, it's going to increase the pressure by 30 times. Uh, you really want to leave it alone? Just from so. the surface. Sorry? Scrape it from the surface. Yes, scrape it from the surface. Thank you. It has to be scraped from the surface. It, we are not supposed to create a wound. Neither even a single bullet drop in a diabetic patient. If we create a wound, if it doesn't heal, then you had it. This is what I did. Just see the images. The size was this way. It has been removed in this. This is a mandakini offloading technique, which has been used. It is very simple. You can get it in your, uh, you can do it routinely in your own clinical practice. This is what the footwear modification which I did. Got a first metatarsal bar here and a scoop here. So to accommodate the callosity. Video please. From the beginning, please. Just play it, please. Just 
is not getting played, fine. Just get back to the slides, please. What is done is uh, we roll your uh, gloves. Yeah, it's available on YouTube also. You can just Google it up and uh, you can see the Mandakini offloading technique in the, yeah, Dr. Sunil Kari has been designed that it is called as uh, Mandakini offloading. It is called as Samadhan offloading. There are different names on that. That is, what it is done is that we roll the uh, glove with air trapped in it. Then we try and uh, with a, uh, what do you say it as, a bandage has been placed or a dynaplast is, uh, it has been trapped in a dynapulse and then a bar is created. Then we place beneath the, uh, wherever we want to offload it and then we stick it around. Slides. Started from the beginning, the slides. So I can just go it off. There is a second case. There is a callosity here. A 70 years male, diabetic, gut control, uh, neuropathic, has shown to a plastic surgeon, shown to general surgeon, debrided, underwent skin, uh, skin grafting three times and had a punch biopsy for the same. Any clues what exactly it uh, the pathology would be? Surrounding callus is there fine? Anything, what, what can, some foreign body can be sitting inside. Okay, anything else? Pressures. pressures. Thank you. It is just because of the pressure. This is the uh, this thing. What uh, kind of management are we going to do for this patient? Offloading. What for the callosity? Again, remove it. The first day, third, forty-second day, ulcer healed completely by its own. This was the footwear modification which I did. There was a, uh, I have a MCR insole with in my OPD. As per my need, I modify the insole as per needed. This is a first metatarsal uh, joint ulcers and there is a tip ulcer. What kind of management and what kind of a cause would be for this patient? Any kind of uh, clue? What abnormality could be there for this and this? Any structural abnormality? I've seen about, ulcer. sorry? Ulcer creator. ulcer creator, okay. Uh, no, there are no hamerto, there is no cloto. Hamerto is in a different form. It has to be in this way, straight, or clock has to be in this way. It is not there in the pictures. Not, uh, it couldn't be a single uh, toe which is going to go into hammer or claw. It has to be accompanying two or three toes along with it. So what kind of abnormality it would be? Fine. There is a first metatarsal MTP joint stiffness in this patients. So how to manage this? Any clue? Fine. What we did is, there is a first metatarsal fascia. The plantar fascia has been tightened up because of which the joint is stiff and because of which the pressure and the ulcer is formed. What we did is, we cut across the selected fascia, that is called as fasciotomy here, and see the range of movement. It got increased. This is how you can offload it surgically. This is killer's procedure of offloading. 
gross metatarsal, we go with a uh, uh, bone osteotomy here and then the ulcer get heals. This is normal bone, this is post-operative. The excision has been there, done, the first metatarsal. There is flexor uh, tenotomy uh, uh, which we did for this patient, the ulcer healed up completely. This is a glotto correction with glider tool, uh, teller tendon transfers which has been done with a Z plasty here to correct the clotto. We insert a uh, pin here straight across after correcting the uh, tendon and then we placed it for a week uh, for 15 to 20 days and then we remove the plaster and the pin. Then the toes get corrected. See the correction. This has been a plantar forefoot ulcers associated with contracture, basically. If we see, this is a high pressure area in a diabetic patient. Normally, this is not there first. So what we do is we lengthen the gastrocnemius. We go with a transection of a gastrocnemius uh, uh, soleus tendon and the forefoot pressure is been relieved. This is surgical correction. You can see this pleurograph, huge amount of pressure here. As compared to that, post-operative, the pressure is less. Same with the graphical representation. This is forefoot ulcer. We excise the second metatarsal head in order to correct the pressure point here, the ulcer healed. This is surgical offloading techniques. Not only the insole or outsole has been modified. Surgically also we offload the uh, things. If we fail to go with the conventional offloading techniques and if the bony prominence is uh, severe on x-rays or on inspection, then we adopt for a surgical correction. Another same way, first metatarsal head transfer. These are air force. These are uh, plastic molded uh, outsoles where we can put a plaster. In, in spite of plaster, we can go with this. These are lighter. These are more convenient, patient friendly. Patient can walk more uh, steady as compared to plasters. This type of insole uh, or a foot correction is in used. It's customized design. There are silicon insoles also, which are commercially available but their results are not that promising as compared to MCR insoles or conventional outer sole modification. There is a term called as total contact cast. Anybody has heard about it? What exactly it is? And for what, for what condition is being used? Any clue? Heel ulcer. Okay. Anybody has got any other opinion? Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Any other entity? Have you heard about charcoal foot? Yes. In charcoal foot, we apply total contact cast to prevent the whole foot uh, into be in a single entity. Then the uh, destruction get uh, small, uh, lessen up the recovery uh, gets uh, faster up and the destruction halts at its uh, same point and the bones try to get fused by its own. This is the total contact cast. This is a male patient, here also here. It healed up completely. The bony destruction has been there. This is a total contact cast with a bony window. When it's been done where, we, uh, where there is an ulcer, and we need to dress it regularly. So we create a bony window in it to dress the ulcer and rest of the feet has been offloaded with a total contact cast. This is what uh, uh, foam has been used where the foot imprint has been implicated and this is how what the footwear inner sole has been modified for this patient, for the same patient. We What we do is we pour a plaster of Paris in it with the uh, let it set. Once it's dry up, a negative cast has been uh, created. Then we go on to create a positive cast and then the positive cast is placed here with the insole on that top and then heated and then the insole has been modified, molded. 
there is another term uh, where we lengthen tendo aculus because if we have a four foot amputation then there is peak plantar pressure occurring at the front point because the uh, gates and the routine structure disturbs for preventing those we lengthen a TA uh, we do a TA lengthening procedure tendo aculus lengthening is been done to offload the foot it can be done for the four foot offloading uh, also as uh, as we have sh I have shown you the gastrocnemius uh, tendon lengthening same thing can be done in tendo aculus also deformed foot with a good footwear is preferable to amputated leg with sophisticated uh, prosthesis. This is what I mean to say. Foot are deformed, no doubt, but still the patient or the person can walk in his on his or her feet with a modified footwear that is more preferable than an amputated leg. Why? Why? Any question, uh, any clues? Because there is 30 times the pressure or the cardiac output or the cardiac load is increased after amputation. And the patient goes into cardiac arrest or a heart failure or MI within five years time. So it is preferable to have a uh, deformed fit with a good process, uh, good uh, uh, footwear modification. The same way, in a patient with diabetic peripheral neuropathy, distance needs to be measured in minutes and not in kilometers. The ultimate goal is to prevent of amputation, protection, protecting the feet for further complication, periodic offloading and, uh, and care is needed. Do not allow your patient to leave clinic with wearing the same pair of shoes which has caused him an ulcer. Early detection, early detection and protection of high pressure areas in the foot and corrective footwear orthosis is the only strategy to prevent loss in a diabetic foot. If offloading is not done to the patient, patient walks to his own death. I would like to end my lecture with a Sanskrit slogan, Charito Charta Bhagya, states that the person who walks his fortune walks ahead to him. Thank you. Everybody, but it has not to be done in adult, and especially in a diabetic patients. Lovely footwears, Kolhapuris, perfectly beautiful footwears, but not ideal for a diabetic patient. Why? This is the answers. Toe is off. Rings, strap, everything is been rubbed, and you are going to land up in a big mess in this patients. Again, heel is off. So it's a bad thing. Hammer toes, everything has been disturbed here. So high heel in a diabetic patient, particularly in a female, is absolutely no no. Absolutely no no. How I chappels? Absolutely no no to them also. Why? If you see, to preventing our uh, slippage of the uh, slippers, your uh, the toe and second uh, to, uh, the your th uh, greater toe and second toe are going to hold it up because of which there is going to be a deformity, callosities, interdigital callosities, everything is going to be hampered. <coughs> Prevention is better than cure in a diabetic foot patient. Trust me. Prevention through education, proper risk assessment, early and progressive, aggressive treatment is needed in a diabetic patient. Do's are, have to check your feet every day for cut, bruises, sores, infections. My, a mirror has to be used if you are not able to lift your feet and see it by your own. You check for color, uh, discoloration, wash your feet daily, especially in between the toes, and dry it comfortably in between the toes specifically. Apply ointment above, below. Use stock, uh, socks, which has to be changed daily. Nails trimmed, which has been shown in the lecture. Rest of the things have been there. Avoid extreme cold, avoid extreme heat. Don'ts are no no for home remedies for corn, callosity, ingrowing toenails. Go to doctors and get it treated properly. 
नो नो टू एप्लीकेशन ऑफ हॉट वाटर बॉटल्स और इलेक्ट्रिक ब्लैंकेट्स बिकॉज दे आर गोइंग टू कॉज यू पर्न सॉक्स हैज टू बी वोन डेली द इलास्टिक ऑफ द सॉक्स इज टू बी वेरी लूज डन अप नो इलास्टिक्स टू द सॉक्स द वी हैव गॉट द इनर कोर ऑफ द सॉक्स विच इज बीन स्लीव्ड रोटेट द सॉक्स एंड वेर इट अपोजिटली बिकॉज एवरीथिंग इज गोइंग टू कॉज अ प्रेशर दैट so we have to avoid pressure as uh, possible use white socks so that we can have uh, we can see if anything is been stained or we have got a injury or anything we, we get a early drop or uh, stain there so that we can point it out easily use cotton socks or woolen socks uh, while uh, purchasing a shoe you have to go in the evening times to purchase a shoe don't smoke how to perform a proper foot examination is structural abnormalities skin changes evidence in medis uh, evidence of infection callosity ulcers range of motion charcot foot peripheral uh, limb assessment peripheral uh, arterial assessment for temperature skin changes ankle brachial index it's very 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 much needed and a 10 monogram filament these are what we are going to see when a patient comes to you this has been told to you already so i'm not going to go into details who is at risk fit peripheral neuropathy previous ulcer or amputated foot structural destruction uh, for, uh, sorry structural deformity or limited joint mobility peripheral arterial disease where hba1c is uh, greater poorly controlled diabetic microvascular pathies we have got three types of fits we have got low risk fit a uh, high risk fit and a uh, at risk fit low risk means neuropathy simple neuropathy nothing else high risk where is neuropathy uh, pulses are absent there is deformities these are at risk or high risk feats low risk feat has to be checked annually high risk feat has to be checked 3 monthly or 6 monthly uh, foot with a ulcer or previous ulcer or present current ulcer has to be referred to a diabetic foot expert straight away if you are comfort confident enough then uh, tackle it at your own end or else refer it refer to a higher center uh, is there the stages of diabetic foot first stage normal high risk feet ulcerated uh, then we have got cellulitis necrotics and amputation this is how we end the whole cycle ends here this is a classification uh, of diabetic feet high risk superficial ulcer deep ulcer osteomyelitis localized gangrene extreme gangrene in this patient we need to have a metabolic control for it hyperglycemia di uh, diet oral hypoglycemic agent and insulin hypertension dyslipidemia and cessation of smoking are must glycemic controls specifically is been done with the help of insulin hba1c should be uh, less than 7 to 6.5 fasting 70 to uh, 1 130 average should be 110 to 140 post prandial should be less than 180 5 minutes 2 minutes 2 minutes 2 minutes 2 minutes insulin uh, basal bolus regime blood pressures these are the foot care uh, emergency means uh, new ulcerations has to be new ulceration critical ischemia swelling severe infection new discoloration has to be referred to the patient uh, has to be referred to a uh, higher center limb threatening non limb threatening has to be referred the same thing these are various uh, bacteria which has been told in the previous lecture i am not going to cover this pre gabalins are the main stay type a uh, a level evidence the same activity wise once you have got uh, no uh, we have been divided into three categories previously uh, uh, the previous there is no ulcerations then if we have a low uh, activity uh, only a clean footwear if we have uh, uh, deformed foot or uh, the uh, deformed foot then we have to go for a uh, insole modification the shoes depth should be more the uh, toe, uh, the upper portion of the toe uh, the toe box has to be widen up no uh, streamlined uh, toes has to be there pvd these are major uh, in, uh, interventions which we do Inter uh, vascular uh, revascularization has been done endovascularly or a bypass surgery has to be done 
sir is going to talk on this so i'm not going to go on this slide it's a team approach specifically and main person in this is is a diabetologist and a podiatrist and psychiatrist is being there it's a mainstay trust me good footwear i already told how to check a footwear is good or not you uh, put your feet here cut it across put it in sole in your insole if the paper goes in and out comfortably then the footwear is accurate for you if it folds somewhere change the footwear the same which i have already told there has been already discussed in a diabetic patient lower limb uh, problems this has been told already and we are getting late just i am running the slides i am a diabetic foot imprint if you don't care for me you may lose me every diabetic limb or a foot says please save me please save me please save me thank you for your patience listening